And let's move into summative evaluation. Again, looking at summative and evaluation as two separate columns. In summative, we want to think about all of the A's being aligned, the atmosphere, the aims, the activities, and the assessments. So in an active learning classroom, we have an atmosphere to consider. How will students work at tables? In an online classroom, we have atmosphere to consider. How will students work together? In ordinary classrooms all over the place where we do engaged learning, we have to think about how we help students see the value of talking with one another and learning together. The atmosphere, the aims of the course, the activities, and the assessments. So if our aim is to um, complete a process, do we see students in their activities work on the process, and does our assessment measure that? Summative assignments need to be transparent. That is clear about what it is we expect students to know, understand, and demonstrate. So a transparent assignment is clear about the tasks, about the skills, the process, and the audience involved with a particular activity or assignment. Summative evaluation also requires us to make sure that the aims that we're looking to address are the aims we're measuring in the assessment we've delivered. So if we've asked students to complexly analyze something and our assessments, evaluation stuff, materials are at the level of remembering, we have a mismatch. Again, all of the A is aligned. The aim is uh, more complex. The assessment should be equally complex. And the activities in between give students an opportunity to practice the skills required to develop those complex skills. The evaluation part is how we watch students perform the intended aim. Do we see that through formal, summative assignments and exams? We might see that in formative work as well along the way. So we're looking to see how students perform the intended aim. Ideally, we're doing this through multiple evaluation forms and formats. So we might have some tests, quizzes, along with short written responses, along with talking in groups and presenting formal understandings from that. And in this evaluation, learners ideally will engage in self and peer assessment. The self-assessment helps students understand how they're learning and develop their learning to learn skills, to identify where they're making mistakes, to think about difficulties, and in both cases come up with strategies for going in new directions. The peer assessment, the peer feedback, can help students to understand how people other than the teacher are seeing something, which often illuminates a gap in understanding that they need to address as part of their development for us to evaluate. Let me look at a couple of examples with you. Cumulative exams are a great way to do summative evaluation. They let students continue to learn over time, bring forward past concepts for use in current uh, assessments, and reflect in new ways on the combination of knowledge. One way they might uh, be able to express their thinking with a multiple choice exam is to explain the answer to an audience. So they've made the choice between A, B, C, and D. Maybe they've made the right choice, all of them. But explaining it to an audience helps them remember why it was this choice and helps you understand their reasoning if they've made a slightly off choice. For exams, especially cumulative exams, it can be important to allow students to develop crib sheets while studying and use this in class. It helps to do two things. It reduces some of the cheating pressure because they have crib sheets at hand to use, and it increases the spaced practice so that students develop the crib sheets at particular stages during the class that you can help orchestrate through assignments that you do so that they're learning a little bit here, rethinking it as they do the next thing, and all of that gets reflected in a crib sheet that they bring to class. In a cumulative exam, as you're looking back at how students have mastered something, think about how they would apply the same concepts or materials to a future-looking question. Remember to feed forward, to ask them to try something that's a next level harder as part of uh, summative evaluation. You might also, where you're asking students to solve problems, make sure that they create a narrative that helps explain why they've done this solution. So if you're asking students in a particular set of exams to debug a program, um, and they come up with a successful way of doing this or a not successful way of doing it, 
you give them a chance to create a narrative that talks about their reasoning to the originator of the program so they're showing their procedural knowledge, they're showing you the concepts they're drawing on, and they're articulating ways that they understand. These are places where you can offer feedback and that you and students can move forward with learning. Another way to think of summative evaluation is through a semester-long project. Perhaps you have three or four short writing assignments. How do they link together with a, into a portfolio so that students can uh, write memos along the way to show their growth and understanding about the concept, the core ideas of the course, to reflect on what they would change if they had another week to look back at one of the papers and revise it. A semester-long project with peer and self-assessment is another way to do summative evaluation. Uh, in that sort of mode, students along the way can use the criteria for the final project to assess where they are along the way and give each other feedback and give themselves new goals for meeting the semester ending project goals um, and completing the aims as part of their assessment. As you're doing this, the important thing to think about with even summative evaluation is that you want students to acknowledge growth and to demonstrate their learning mastery. As with formative feedback, there are technology tools that you can use. Assignments within Canvas offer you opportunities to incorporate rubrics. You can incorporate group assignments and group feedback at each step in a longer process. And in Canvas, you can respond via be a speed grader, offering comments that are written, that are typed, or that are written, that are spoken, um, that are videotaped. You can also use some external tools. Google Drive can be a registered service within Canvas so that students can share with you a folder in which they keep drafts of their work, or a group can share a folder in which you can see their notes from meetings they had as well as their final assignments. The University of Libraries provides an assignment calculator that students and you can use to plan out the stages and the resources they'll need for longer summative assignments. And Flipgrid can also be used as a way for teams to offer final evaluatory feedback um, when they wrap up a project. A great fast way for teachers to respond to groups as a whole and to offer individual feedback within this forum. As always, remember with assessment that assessment that is authentic, accessible, and aligned will be fair for everyone and will help learners and teachers know that they've met the course goals.